Yeah, Art of Sports here with, uh, you've been called it before, man, the legendary Big John McCarthy. <laughs> uh, we're about two days away from uh, Ortiz versus Sonnen, man. Did you think that fight was going to happen, being that obviously they were in different organizations for a while, um, but you know, the 20 year history and all that stuff. Did you ever think this matchup was going to happen? Nah, and you know, when you, when you look back, they were both in two different weight classes. You know, Chael really spent his whole career at 185, and Tito has always spent his career at 205. 199 back when it was you know the weight class was that so no I never saw that you know it was going to I knew about what happened in the wrestling match long ago and stuff but that's amateur wrestling and that's great but it has nothing to do with the fight world and I never thought you know I would have this fight coming up that I would look and see a chael against Tito that's you know when you look at it Tito was one of those guys that started talking in the, in the beginning of MMA and then chael actually took it to another level and uh it's, a, it's an interesting concept that it's just, you know, those roads have finally crossed. I know everyone always asks you, what's your favorite fight that you go for read I'll narrow it down a little bit. What's your favorite uh, Ortiz fight? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Favorite Cheeto fight. Hey, you know what? I don't know. There, there's, there's been, you know, a couple of Cheeto's fights, and even the ones that, you know, he may not have won. I've always, I've always loved the way Cheeto competed. Because he just, he went out there and he gave everything he has. I mean, you know, win, lose, I tell guys all the time, we all want to win. But if winning, a, if losing a fight is the worst thing that happens to you in your life, you got a great life. And Tito has gone about, you know, having some great fights, but he's lost, you know. But one of the best fights I saw, I saw him have, because he had a knee problem at the time, you know, when he fought Forrest Griffin the first time, it was a great fight. You go back and watch it, and they, they went after each other. I really enjoyed that fight. His, his fight against Ken Shamrock the first time, you know, kind of highlighted him and got him to that pinnacle of being that legendary type of fighter. But that fight against Forrest the first time, that was a hell of a fight. Well, since I'm one of the ones that came up with them, yeah, I think they're better for the sport. <laughs> it, you know, everything is about, again, we have people saying things without knowledge. And when you talk about the changing of the grounded fighter is because fighters were smart. You know, back in 2001 when we came up and said, okay, we took what from boxing was a down fighter, meaning anything more than the soles of the feet hits the ground, they're down. But fighters quickly thought, well, you know what, in a bad position I can do and put my little fingertips down and I'm down and it, it altered the sport. It altered what it should have been. So what we're doing when it comes to the down fighter is we're basically making the fighters make a decision. They're not going to want to put both hands down. We don't want them to put both hands down. Okay, we're saying that's really stupid. So if you want to be down and you're in that position where you think, put your knee down, one knee down, make sure a grounded fighter doesn't matter if there's anything else touching, and you have both hands to defend yourself. That's what we want to see because that's going to keep you from being hurt. So the whole concept of oh, you know, someone could get more hurt. No, they're going to get less based upon that rule because we've worked with it, practiced with fighters, and seen. And you, know, you can look at the last <laughs> UFC show that was in Phoenix. Didn't have any problems with down fighters. Okay, that's the whole. Thing. Sure. <laughs> well, I want to ask you about your brother boxing. There's a lot of talk recently, uh, Floyd Mayweather, and Floyd Mayweather, you know, and Conor McGregor, that whole situation. What's your take on that whole situation? You, you know, what happens if they get together? Ah, you know, first off, I don't. If there's an athletic commission that puts them together as boxers, they're doing the wrong thing. Okay, you want to make it fair? Put them in as kickboxers. Okay, Connor can't take Floyd down. Okay, but he can get kicked to the legs and he can get kicked to the body and face, and it'll change what Floyd can do. So if Floyd wants to be fair about it and say, "Hey, I really want to compete because that's what it's about," then compete on a pretty even basis. Let's do kickboxing. Okay, let's not just box because if Connor boxes against Floyd, he's gonna lose. Okay, if Floyd does MMA against Connor, he's gonna lose. So then let's put him in something that maybe well, we'll see. That way, as an athletic commission, you can say, yeah, I'll put Floyd in there and kick. He can he can box. You know, I can put I can put Connor in there at that. Let's see. Last question for me, man. Ronda Rousey had a 
big, uh, big hyped up return. Uh, ended up you know, losing in, in, in the first round, 46 seconds. What was your take on that? What's your take on just her kind of mentality after the Hong Kong loss and just kind of going forward? Look at Ronda. You know, no, no matter what anyone wants to say, let's break this down to what it is. Ronda has been phenomenal for women's MMA. Gina Carano was the first one that had that face and through Strike Force, you know, Lead XC and then Strike Force, she really got pushed. And women's MMA started to come out, and then Ronda was the one that took that mantle and took it to that next step and got women's MMA into the biggest arenas and the biggest fights out there with the most eyes watching. She has been phenomenal for MMA. Okay, so she lost a couple fights. Big deal. Okay, she, like everybody, there's always somebody out there that can give us problems. Okay, and if she ends up deciding she doesn't want to do MMA anymore, great. She doesn't have to. If she decides she wants to come back and fight again, great. I'd love to see her. But she's a young woman who has done an incredible job with building women's MMA. She needs she needs to prove nothing to nobody. But she needs to, in here, be happy with herself, and that's all I want to see. Do you agree with all people saying that Mike Rose is kind of caught up to her? Do you agree with that? Well, absolutely. It's not that the sport caught up to her. Girls catch up to her in the fact that everybody, there's always a way. Everyone has their weaknesses. We all do. And sometimes it takes a long time for someone to kind of expose those to not only us as the person that is, has the skills, but to other people. And then that blueprint is kind of there. And so this is the way you want to fight this person. And now everyone believes. No different than running the four-minute mile. No one can run a four-minute mile until Roger Bannister did it. Then everyone was doing it. Because now people go, it can be done. Okay? Nobody is unbeatable. That's the one thing in, in MMA. Nobody's unbeatable. Okay? There's always a way to beat someone. There's always a way for them to lose. But can you come up with that solution? Can you put them in that spot? Ronda got put in that spot. But you know what? Never did she lack heart. Never did she lack trying. Never did she quit. What do you? What more can you ask of somebody? Like I said before, if the worst thing in the world is you lose a fight, so what? Seeing you at Dancing with the Stars, seeing with the crowd, who's the best uh, dancer fighter that you've seen? <laughs> Not dancer? Yeah. Fighter? Yeah. Well, the best dancer is Paige Van Zandt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the best fighter that's done it is, uh, God. Uh, uh, well, it's between Chuck and Randy. Right. Victor Ortiz also. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the time, everyone. My pleasure, man. Thank you.